Well, good morning. John here again. Um, haven't done a video for a while, so I'm going to try another one. I'm uh, in the process of building a kitchen table. Uh, decided that we wanted a new kitchen table and a little bit different style. It'll be uh, uh, about 40 by 50 inches, and then it'll open. It'll have slides, so it'll open and receive one leaf. And, uh, Wanted to get a table where table, chairs, everything would all be the same wood. I'm not a chair maker, not going to be one. Uh, so we went down to the Amish community and uh, found a nice place where we picked out some chairs so you could get whatever wood it wanted. So um, we're getting in, in bare wood. And so uh, we ordered four chairs in red oak to be bare. And, um, I had a lot of red oak in stock here, so I'm going to build a table out of that. Um, it's kind of a design as I go, and uh, I'm not working off of something specific, but uh, uh, I'm just in the process. I've uh, cut the lumber to length, uh, just a little over the 40 inches, about 40 and a quarter, um, and I'm jointing one edge, and I'll run them through the saw, uh, table saw, to give me nice clean edges for glue up and then uh, at that point uh, we'll glue it up and uh, go from there. So I'm going to uh, run a couple pieces through the joiner uh, just to give you an idea what I'm doing. I'm doing a little extra double checking here as far as making sure that edge is square and uh, straight uh, because I want to make sure I've got really nice joints for glue up on this project. And um, so I'm taking a little extra precaution that I might not normally do, but uh, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, join two or three boards here just to give you an idea of what I'm doing. And then we'll move on to the table saw. sides and nice and square and so now before I do any glue up I'm going to plane them so that I have one side that's really nice plus that they're of equal thickness all the way through so um, boards are just a shade under an inch um, I'm going to take as little as I can to um, just get them like I said uh, the same width or the same thickness and um, give them a nice smooth surface. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plane a couple and uh, show you how I'm running them through and then again I'll skip over a lot of it and we'll come back. Um, I got uh, good dust collection and I use hearing protection with uh, the planer. Uh, it gets pretty noisy, so uh, we'll get going here.
Morning. So um, I've uh, planed all the boards. Uh, I've got, I actually have eight boards here. I uh, cut so that I've got uh, 52 inches overall, 40 inches wide when I end up trimming the ends. Um, there'll be two pieces uh, since the table is going to split and uh, have a leaf in it. I'll make the leaf later um, when I've got all this finished. So I planed all the boards. Uh, I laid them out, kind of move them around so that, uh, especially with this red oak, it's a coarser grain, um, just to give it so it, uh, it has a little eye appeal to it. Uh, move the boards around and got what I think looks pretty good. I've marked each board. This is maybe overkill, but just so I don't get them out of order, uh, I've marked each board with a piece of tape and a number. And uh, uh, I've laid out, um, here again, um, everybody will tell you, you to glue up something like this, you just need to glue it. You don't need anything else. But I like to use biscuits or dominoes, and um, I got a new domino joiner, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to put uh, three dominoes in each joint. I think it just makes it a whole lot easier for lining everything up, and um, we'll do that. And um, so I'm, I've laid out my lines. Uh, I marked a little line. I lay them out at uh, I just eyeball it and see what looks right, take a tape measure, so I lay everything out the same. Uh, I mark the lines on both boards, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll cut the dominoes, for the holes for the dominoes, and um, then we'll start gluing things up. Finishing up with the dominoes here, so I'm gonna show you uh, got my Festool domino tool hooked up to my back and uh, wherever the marks are I just line up and make my cuts. Double check my domino, make sure I've got my depth right and I got a good fit and good to go. Start my glue up on these. Um, I'm using uh, Tight Bond Ultimate Glue and uh, as I said before, I love these uh, rubber or neoprene brushes, whatever they are, that I get from Rockford and um, my dominoes. Uh, I do both edges. Some people say you don't have to again, but to me it's just worth the extra time. So uh, we'll do a few here and I got them set in the clamps. Make sure I get a little glue in each one of the domino holes. I put a bead of glue on then I come back with my brush brush it out to make sure I've got the whole surface covered. And I do both surfaces, that way I figure if I do miss anything at all I've got it covered. So. Um, my domino in sorry I got my hammer get those in prepare my other edge
Okay. Um, I put a little bit of glue on the top of each domino. Brush that around on the domino. Again, the dominoes are more for alignment than anything, but uh, really supposed to be prepared. But once in a while, I don't remember everything I need. Okay, so there's my first two pieces. Kind of the easiest. Put them together. Just get them started. Come back and do another edge. Put one in the center and on the opposite side so that uh, trying to avoid any kind of bending or warping or whatever you want to call it in that top. Just snug. And there we go. Um, take my straight edge and lay on it. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. So that's one. We'll get the other one done. We'll have uh, the two halves of the tabletop done except to trim up the edges. So I've got my uh, panels all glued up. Um, I've uh, taken the clamps off, uh, scraped them a little bit uh, with very little glue squeeze out and um, got a pretty decent nice surface here. Uh, will require of course some finishing sanding but now I want to cut the panels to size and so uh, we're going to be 40 inches wide. They're already, or yeah, they're already 26 inches this way, each one of them, which will make the table 40 by 52. And um, of course, with the slides open up, and we're going to put a one-foot uh, leaf in there. So um, I'm using my track saw. Normally, I've just used it on um, uh, sheet goods. Uh, but uh, I'm going to use it today. The other thing I've done is that um, uh, with the track, normally you just lay it on the material, line it up with the cut lines, and cut. Uh, it comes with, or I got mine with a couple of clamps that goes underneath, goes in a slide on the bottom. I'm using them today for a couple reasons. Um, one is on a shorter distance, sometimes it doesn't hold as well as you'd like it to. The other one is um, I'm just wanting this really accurate and of course I don't want to mess it up and so um, I'm using the clamps today to hold it in place they just like I say slide in a track underneath and clamp on the underside of the workpiece and so I've cut one end of this one 
and I'm going to go ahead and cut the other end. Um, I've got my DeWalt plunge saw, um, and I've got it hooked to my Festool vac, which is really nice because it plugs in, saw plugs in it. When I start the saw, the vac starts, and um, the saw, this vac's also got a HEPA filter, so there's virtually no dust with this, a little bit, but virtually none, so it makes a really nice system. So I'm going to go ahead and make this cut, um, and then um, we'll do the other one. saw set just to cut through I must have let up on it a little bit so that's a nice uh, with this system uh, it works really nice so um, again I just loosen these clamps underneath take it off that's how the clamps are on there and uh, got a really nice edge with uh, no chip out. Um, going to double check my measurements. Dead on 40. And dead on 40. Looking really good. Throw the square in there just to, to see. Oh yeah, nice. So anyway, I'll do the other panel and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm back. Um, probably wondering what I've uh, skipped over here. Uh, I don't know whether it was laziness or just trying something different or, or what. But uh, anyway, last time I did, showed you anything, I was cutting the actual panels uh, for, the, for the bottom. So I had cut the panels. Um, I cut the two leaves that uh, I'm going to use. And... Uh, <clears throat> Originally, I would have put probably a rounded edge, or and I might have rounded the corners. But the chairs we picked uh, were a little different than what it originally. I don't have a picture of them, but um, considering the chairs, the design, and I saw an edge like this on a <laughs> on a desk that I thought looked really good. So I took my uh, what I used was a panel cutting bit that I've got in a set for building doors and I used it to make this edge um, so I cut uh, with the panel bit it just rounded the edges a little bit and gave me a real nice edge I think uh, so I, I made the two main panels uh, I made two leaves that uh, are a foot but I'm gonna have to trim them a little bit because my opening is 24 inches and to get everything in I'm going to need to open that pin a little or open that up a little bit so um, probably narrow them to 11 inches. Then I uh, I made the legs. Um, the legs were three pieces of five quarter red oak, and um, I took them. I uh, made sure I planed them so that I wouldn't have any gaps. Uh, glued them up into one square and then I cut a taper on two sides and I put a decorative V groove on the two exposing sides. So uh, I built those. Um, they're not quite finished yet. I'm just getting ready to attach them. So then after that I uh, was kind of trying to figure out my apron um, and location and height and that kind of stuff. So um, again, I'm not working off a set of plans. I kind of go by what I think looks good, looks right. Um, so I, uh, I ended up, these aprons are three and a quarter inches tall. Uh, I set them back, uh, the legs are actually set back four inches from the corners. And so 
I cut all four pieces and I left this uh, apron on the long edge uh, solid before I attached it. Um, I used pocket holes and I attached this, um, made sure I had everything square and straight and I attached it with pocket screws. Once I had everything connected, uh, then I took a line on this apron on, the, on this side where the table splits and I took a Japanese saw and um, pole saw with a fine tooth blade and I cut that there. It worked really slick. After that, um, I had, I actually had these extensions, wood extensions from a uh, another table I had built years ago and um, I attached them um, I used number 12 screws, wood screws and they were inch and a half screws so I'm a, about a half inch maybe just a shade over 9 16 into my tabletop which is three quarters inch uh, there's six there's three screws on either side and I've got them attached so then once I had them attached it was a case of uh, figuring out the legs and so what I've done on the on the legs, on attaching the legs, uh, I'm going to show you in here. I'm going to pause for a second and move in and, and show you what we've been doing on the legs. Okay, so on the legs, um, to attach them in the corner, I'm using this cross piece. Uh, you can buy metal plates and all that good stuff. And I actually looked for some, couldn't find them, and so. I went back to my old standby. I've done a few tables this way, and it's just a, a piece cut at 45, 245s, so it sits at an angle in the corner. Um, I've got uh, um, the hanger bolts that uh, go through, um, and I mark, I, I cut this, and Drill my hole in the center, and then I lay this and the table leg up there. Mark it on the table leg so I've got a good connection or a good line up on my connection. Um, then I took um, again took my fine cut Japanese saw. Um, I did three eighths, three inches long since my apron is three and a quarter. I cut this flat spot three inches long and three-eighths up on the side. Um, I cut my cross piece here with this saw, then take it to the band saw, and I've got a, a, a block that just holds it at 45 degrees, so I can cut that. Um, gives me a square to this corner block. So then uh, I take the hanger bolt. Um, these are 5 16 bolts. I'm drilling a 7.30 seconds hole, I believe. They say about 75% of the, whatever the diameter of your lag is. And so, I'm taking my hanger bolt, uh, I take two nuts, lock them tight together. I'm putting a little, uh, little finishing wax on these just to uh, give them a little lubrication. and. Uh, Put them in again with the double nut lock tight on there. Um, just uh, work them in. And I take it down. Got to watch it, it'll loosen up a little bit on me sometimes. And that, that little bit of wax makes a lot of difference. It really makes them go in nice. Take them down until I'm almost down to the threads, not quite. Make your screws apart or your nuts apart. And we're ready to attach the leg, so I'm going to move back out and uh, we'll put the leg tight. Okay, so uh, 
got my leg made up. Put the hardware on it. Move this leg out of the way. Leaf out of the way. So it's just a simple case of uh, setting the leg in. The block goes on like this. Right in the corner, I use a flat washer. And again, a nut. And just tighten it up. Uh, this is, I, I like this because uh, if for some reason you want to move the table, um, the lights come off nice and easy. Um, you know, if somewhere down the road you want to store the table, moving it just makes it really nice. And it makes for a really nice solid connection. I'll double check just to make sure I'm nice and square. And they're good, solid, rigid legs. Now, uh, when I, I'm going to take these off and finish them, I'm going to chamfer the bottoms. I uh, put a chamfer on that. That way, when you scoot it, you'll never chip it out. And just a small chamfer on the edge. I'll sand them out. Um, and uh, when I put these back on, then I'll probably tack these blocks in place with a little finishing nail uh, just to hold them. Uh, you wouldn't have to, but, but uh, that way if you take the legs off, the blocks are going to stay in place. So I've got one more leg to put on, and uh, then, like I said, I'm going to take them off, refinish them, or finish them, put them on, and, um, and then it'll be time to turn the table over and fit my leaves, and we'll go from there. So here we are, um, kind of a rough finish. I wanted to get it together and just make sure everything was looking good. Legs are probably hard to see with this, but um, you can see I got tapers on them. Um, like I said, I got to trim those um, leaves a little bit. Um, I think I understand why most tables have an 11 inch leaf instead of a 12. Uh, that opening is actually 24 and by the time I put the pins in to line everything up um, I'm going to need those to be 11. So I'm going to cut those to 11 inches wide and figure out the pins and then mm, the construction is pretty well done then I'll take it um, take it back apart as far as the legs off finish them up um, and get it ready to stain. So I've got it all taken apart and I've got everything sanded. I sanded uh, with a 150 and then a 220 and then I hand sanded with a 240 grit. Um, I'll probably do a real light hand sanding again as I get to each individual piece, but you can see I've got the legs here. Um, gives you a better idea of the, where the apron is and all that stuff. I've got the, the leaves cut, and uh, so i got everything spread out here. Probably next day or so I'll start staining, and um, as we get some staining, I'll get that... Uh, recorded and hope to get it finished up in a week or so. So here's the finished product in place. Um, you can see I don't have the leaves in here. I've got two leaves to go in this table and um, put a little bit of decoration on the leg, tapered leg. A uh, pretty traditional look and um, all we got to do now is we're waiting on four chairs that we ordered that are also red oak and I can match them up the table. So um, enjoyed this project. Take a look at it. Thanks.